Okay, we are going to do a tiger in the zoo. With your phone now. Uh, tiger in the no, first lap. Tiger in the zoo. By Leslie Knox. a very rare breed then maybe otherwise not we see wild animals in the in a zoo it? so it could be anything you have uh, zebras you have elephants you have uh, giraffes you have hippopotamus you can see rhinoceros you can see tiger leopard lion and so forth then you have monkeys you have you could have uh, gorillas you could have uh, chimpanzees, orangutan, you could have different kinds of reptiles. All this you will see. Whatever is in the, should be in the wild, is what you get to see in the zoo. And do they roam freely in the zoo? Do they roam freely in the zoo? Then they, they, they walk beside you? No. Then where are they kept? They are kept in the cages or enclosures. They go the side. But the giraffe was this much. Why couldn't it cross it? It was an enclosure. Okay, that they are barbed wires and they have been told that they are restricted. It could be just a cage or there is an enclosure. Okay, and if you see, there are sometimes, you know, tigers also who are in enclosures, but there is some canal around it or water around it. And so they cannot cross. And the walls are high. So, so if you see what is but why are the animals kept in the zoo for what purpose so that people, so that people can see right people the animals are kept in the zoo for entertainment purposes for for people to come to for the maybe the no no yes they are come if it is then that's wildlife sanctuary and national park if it is a zoo the zoo is kept for people to visit the zoo and see the animals. Okay. The main purpose of keeping them in the... Otherwise, if it's for conservation purposes, then they are kept in wildlife sanctuaries and national parks, which are still better place than a zoo. But essentially, in a zoo, what we see is these big wild animals being caged up and confined to a small lot of so the theme of this poem, a tiger in the zoo, presents what picture? A wild animal and a majestic animal as the tiger being caged in a So where does one? Yes. So what is the theme of the poem? The theme of the poem is versus a contrast. So, 
compare and contrast between this compare and contrast between his free life and caged life. So free life means freedom. So it's a compare and contrast between freedom and cage life means captivity. Yes, one is that it shows how the life is different. And what is the other thing? It shows the natural tendency of the people, or the natural instinct of people to be free. Right? If I keep you here, cage, locked up, how is your life going to be? You were in cage for three years. You were in cage for three years? Where? Lockdown. Lockdown. Huh. And then how did you panic? And how did we panic? And the moment the lockdown lifted, people just from the streets. Okay, so that, yes, that's how it is. So, so it's a natural, and he has liquor shop. Natural instinct. Okay, we are not going to go through personal comment, please. No, refrain from it. Natural instinct of remaining free. These are the two main themes of the poem, A Tiger Poem, A Tiger in the Okay, so first I'll read. The, uh, obviously, if it is in the in captivity, it is robbed of its freedom. It doesn't have any freedom of what? Freedom of movement, isn't it? And freedom of speech. Freedom of movement, freedom of what you get to eat, isn't it? So, what will you, what will the tiger eat? Whatever the zookeeper gives, that is what the tiger has to eat. It cannot go and hunt its natural prey like it would do if it was out in the open. It wouldn't have a place to go and. What is means that what we are people to put uh, old age lines in. Old age lines. Lions. Old age lions in the so zoo. Then, they can't even go for a prey even if they That is, uh, could be. Could be. That is. When he throws the beef, chickens, you know, the lion and the tiger and not tail and. Ah, So that uh, they don't leave the habit of uh, hunting. There are very few uh, zoos do that, otherwise, who mostly it is curated food. Because after they that, they leave. They are going to that. They will not eat the tiger. The zoo they kept in the zoo only. Sometimes when uh, you know uh, little ones are born in the zoo, then they can leave them in the wilderness or they can send them to the wildlife sanctuaries or the national parks. So in the zoo where the animals are kept, they are deprived of the freedom to move, they are deprived of the freedom to do what they want, eat what they want, run behind the place or enjoy the uh, sky or the ground. So it is completely in captivity and it yearns for its freedom. It longs for its freedom. It's not a life that it enjoys. Does it enjoy life? I have been to quite many zoos and I've seen mostly the animals are very morose. They are dull, they are, they are sleepy, they are least bothered. You, you, you walk up to the cage and they are far behind just lazing around looking at you, not even bothering to look at you or whatever you do. So they are, even though the purpose is entertainment and the listeners want to see them, they are somewhere, you know, hidden in some corner or in some obscure place and looking away. Hardly, you know, I would have seen just maybe once or twice that a tiger is actually, or the lion is actually walking around. Okay. So, when I remember my lesson, the tiger came this or the lion came this one to the case, but it didn't do anything. In they will not do anything. And sometimes I've seen, you know, they just walk and down. You are looking at them, they don't bother to look at you. Okay. The one the lion just comes, it just walks and it goes around. It doesn't even look yeah, out. Snakes are yes. Other reptiles as well. Uh, okay. So, 
and see that even though it is for us entertainment for them it is not entertainment at all no. for no. them it is children love to see watch animals that is entertainment if i love to watch cartoon that is entertainment no same way if i love to go to the zoo and uh, look at an elephant and uh, with a stump it in that's entertainment whatever right. brings you happiness you can't see that animals every day right they are rare and uh, you they get to see only in the pictures oh. right where did i ever get to see a lion in the zoo maybe later on i have been to wild life sanctuaries i have seen there as well i have seen white tigers in the sanctuary white tiger was there in goiwali so then uh, otherwise you get to see these different wild animals because we don't go to the forests we don't live in the forest we don't get to see them in the natural environment i haven't seen i haven't been to a forest where i have seen a panther hunting its prey i have but i have seen a panther where in the so i haven't seen that i haven't uh, uh, witnessed that kind because we are not living in the jungle so where do we but we have heard all about it we know that uh, cheetah is the fastest animal we know how giraffe has long neck and all that but we haven't seen i haven't seen a giraffe in the forest i haven't i went to gir forest in gujarat and i did not see a lion at all for at least 6 hours we roamed the forest but we couldn't spot a Yeah, but I have seen a lion in the. Who? I? Ah, uh, sort of yes. I wouldn't want to keep a pet, but yes, like you see them. So I have been to that, but I haven't been able to see. I have always seen other animals, but not a lion. Where have I seen a lion? And I have seen a lion in the zoo. Apart from the ones which are drawn and the pictures that we have. so for us it may be a source of entertainment we want to see them we are in, they are not why because imagine yourself you being kept in a cage and animals coming and having a look at you it could be the other way around also for thing they can't because they are the lower order ones we are the more intelligent ones so we have been able to cage them we have been able to hunt them they have been able to do the same but in case you would have been kept in a cage for everybody to see and people and you just have this much place for yourself for the rest of your life how would you feel obviously not great would you like to entertain other people you wouldn't want to entertain other people you would be angry but would there be any use of you you know shouting and screaming and pelting and nobody is going to come and feel you after a certain point in time you will stop Okay. maybe initially you will revolt initially you are going to scream and shout and you know yell and wish and yell but after a period of time when you see that yeah it's of no use you are trying for freedom or capture uh, this captivity is not going to happen and what you are left with is only deep quiet rage and frustration okay and that is exactly what the tiger goes through in this poem and through that in the what is the uh, poet trying to convey that we should try and keep the animals in their natural surroundings and we should not cage them or keep them in captivity only for our personal entertainment or needs if it is for their good then it's fine but if it is only for entertainment purpose then we should not do something like this we should release them and let them let them live a free life just like we enjoy a free life they have the right to enjoy a free life. okay so i'll read the poem once and then we'll do stanza wise explanation this is page 29 A tiger in the zoo. It says the poem contrasts a tiger in the zoo with the tiger in its natural habitat. The poem moves from the zoo to the jungle and back again to the zoo. So it's a compare and contrast, no, between life in the jungle and life in the cage, or in the zoo. Read the poem, Simon Mas. He stalks in his vivid stripes. 
the few steps of his cage on paths of velvet quiet in his quiet range. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass, near the waterhole where plump deer pass. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his claws terrorizing the village. But he's locked in a concrete cell, his strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. He hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars, and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. Okay, so we got a peek into his life. What does it say? First stanza say, you see, he stalks in his vivid stripes. Who is with you over here? The tiger. Okay, the tiger in this room. The tiger. And stalks. What do you mean by stalks? Stalk means to like watching. No, no, not watching. Not watching. Not stand is to pace to and fro. Walk up and down. Stop means to go. Walk up and down. Pace to and fro. Is to or fro. Walk up and down. So suppose this is the cage. What does the tiger do? It does this. Can it go any further? Walks down. Okay. Can it go any further? So what is this? This is called stalking. Facing to and fro and walking. Up or down. That is all that the tiger can do. At the best, I can go two steps here and come back. That is all. That this is the confinement I am in. Right? That is how the tiger is. So he stalks in his vivid stripes. Vivid means what's the meaning of vivid? Vivid means clear. Okay, clear. Right, stripes, the tiger has stripes now on its back. So it is describing the tiger, it has vivid stripes. This clear, bright stripes on its, as its scale. And what does it do in that he majestically, he walks up and down. On paths of velvet quiet. What do you mean by paths of velvet quiet? What is that? Pause. Pause, yes. Paths of velvet the velvet is referred to the paws. Paws are soft. That is why it's called velvet. And when it walks up and down, are you able to hear the footsteps? No. no. If your paws are, if, if it's the, uh, if it's imagine the uh, horse's hooves, can it walk silently? No. The moment it takes one step and there is a noise. But since the have you seen um, this one, a uh, cat walking, you will not be able to hear a cat at all. It has such soft paws when it makes, you will not know when it has approached. But how, how they, they catch the prey also like that. They walk up silently behind. It's only because of the rustling of the leaves or maybe the forest floor that the noise comes, but the noise is never made of the paw. So the pads of velvet refers to the paws of the tiger and since it is soft, it is quiet. In his quiet rage, here it says, tells you the mood of the tiger. What is the, what kind of mood is the tiger? It is angry. Yes, though he is walking up and down and silently inside, is he silent? No, inside he is extremely angry and frustrated. But is he able to show that frustration? No, he is not roaring, he is not shouting, he is not calling. No, it is, it is a silent frustration that he is going through. So it says his quiet rage. When we say rage, what do we normally associate with? Loud noise. When you are 
mother is angry when i am angry i am we do what we shout suppose you are making a lawyer now is what will i say i say children be quiet i will say children stop talking so what do i do i raise my voice so when we talk about anger we talk about loud we think of a loud voice but it's just the opposite for the tiger why because the tiger knows that even if i shout for freedom even if i roar and make my and this comfort a discontent no nothing is going to happen so what has it become it has become quiet so the rage is there but the rage is a quiet rage yeah so now you have to visualize the tiger who is walking up and down silently quietly but in his heart it is filled with rage this was a picture in the zoo now we come to another picture okay where is this this is a spree life the life that he should be enjoying the first one is life he is having now and the second stanza is the life that he is entitled to that he should be enjoying and what he should be doing he should be lurking in shadows lurking means the meaning of lurking that means hiding and why does the tiger hide when does the tiger hide in the shadows when he wants to catch his prey unawares if he goes walking up to the prey the prey will run away so what how does he catch wild animals how do they catch they quietly sneak behind catch the prey unawares and then pounce maybe by that time if the animals get to know they run and the wild animals follow they pursue but when they approach they approach silently so they hide behind long grasses the trees and wait for the proper time to pounce on the prey so he should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass sometimes these forests have these long so long the grasses are that it covers the entire body of the animal so when something is inside these long grasses you are not able something is sitting and you know waiting and watching you are not able to see that animal there only when it starts moving and the grasses move and make noise are the animals able to understand okay there is a tiger or a lion or a greater animal of prey over so his natural instinct would be to lurk in shadow and slide through long grass near the water hole you know of a water hole what is a water hole no a water hole is like a river or a lake or a pond or a pool where all the animals come to drink so it would go to be a pool like this a big pond or maybe a river bank and the, all the animals would gather here and drink so it is a meeting place for the animals otherwise the animals would be all here and there and so which is where would you would it be easy for the uh, beast of prey to go and hunt the water hole because you are sure to get some of the other animals near the water hole so he would be doing what he would be somewhere in these long grasses here hiding okay we hiding here and waiting and watching when you no know, others would leave and one would stay behind ah because they are back in yes because if they are all together he will be outnumbered right so what he will wait he will watch he will see okay others are moving one is left behind and it will silently come out and catch pounce or pursue so what that is is that is natural way that is what he should be doing instead of sitting in the cage and waiting for somebody to put a plate in so he should be uh, lurking in shadows sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass plump means fat nice and healthy what would you like to he would have like to have somebody who is skinny a skinny deer no a plump deer would be more meat right so we would be waiting for that plump deer to 
pass and then you would bounce on that. So this is the picture of the free life. Now we see, okay, what else it says in the third stanza? He should be snarling around houses and the jungle's edge. Snarling means? Angry. No, some short noises, short angry noises that one emits from the voice. Warning. The tigers, yeah, it's a sort of warning, yes, that I am around. So the tiger would be snarling around what? The houses, you know, there's a, outside the forest, every place is not a forest, isn't it? Beyond the forest or at edge of the forest, you have habitation, you have villages. And in the villages, what are you likely to find? Human beings as well as cattle okay, or domesticated animals. And they are easier prey to the tiger than the other wild animals. Because other wild animals are, will also be running, they will also be fast. But here, what are the human beings doing? They are sitting. They are not running. They are not as fast. Okay. And the domesticated cattle is also tethered. If you have a cow or a goat in the house, at the end of the day, what do they do? They tie the goat to a rope, with a rope to a tether. That is, it could be a wooden pole or something like that. Or there will be a cow shed and the cows will be kept inside the shed. They will be tied. All of them will be so if the domesticated animals are tied, it's easy for the tiger, no? Because those are not, we will not be able to run. So he can easily pounce on them and eat them up. So what would he be looking? First of all, they look for prey in the jungle itself. But suppose they don't get a prey in the jungle. Or suppose they are wounded. Or suppose they are old. Then what, where do they go for, to look for their meat or look for their food? They go near these villages. And that is how they become cattle eaters or cattle lifters or man eaters. Okay. So then they become, so either he would be in the first instance is when it is said that he would be nearing the water hole and he would be catching the other beasts. Okay. Why? Or else he would be snarling around the houses in the villages which is at the periphery or at the edge of the forest. And he would be looking to pick up the cattle from there. So he should be snarling around houses and the jungle's edge. Edge means end. Jungle's end. Where jungle ends and settlements begin. Barring his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. Bearing means <coughs> opening. Okay. Opening. Fans means? No. Fans means teeth. Okay, and then the claws. So he would be walking around, opening his mouth wide, and you know, taking out his teeth. They have very sharp teeth. They have canines, no? They're carnivorous, so their canines are very, very sharp. So it would be opening its mouth wide and showing its teeth and the claws are also sharp. That is how they kill, isn't it? When they pounce, they do what? They take out the skin, they dig it, dig into the skin and catch hold of them. That's how their claws are made. And what in that, what do they do? They terrorize the village. So that is his natural instinct. His natural instinct is to live in open, is to walk about, is to get its own food and its prey. Now we come back again to where, to where he is at present in his confinement. And the poet says, but he is locked in a concrete cell. His strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. So he says, but he is not there. He should be there. So that is why you see both the stanzas is written should be. He is not. But in the fourth stanza you see it says, but he is at present. This is his present condition. That he is locked in a concrete cell. Cell means a cage. 
So he is locked in this concrete cage. His strength behind bars, the strength that he would have used to kill and hunt and get its food, is all what? It is all trapped. Okay. He is not able to use his strength at all. What strength is he going to use just to walk up and down the cage? Because he has nothing else to do. He has to only eat and sleep and walk. That's it. According to the English language, it should be, but he is, I should be included, right? So, in exams, you can write. That. You have to write, he is only. The poet is, the poet doesn't have to belong to England, no? So, he can write, it is the poet's or the writer's uh, liberty of freedom that they have in writing. But since you are studying under British English, so you will have to write the full, you cannot write it, abbreviations. The poet can write, but you cannot. If they are asking you to quote the line, then you can use the words line. But if you have to write an answer in your own words, then you have to write it in words. Sentences. Okay, no applications. Okay, so his strength is being locked behind the concrete cell and stalking the length of his cage, ignoring the visitors. He is in no mood. His work is not to entertain visitors. Nice. His work is not to entertain people. He is least bothered for whatever reasons you have put the tiger in the uh, cage, he is not interested. So even though visitors will come, they are very eager. They will be looking, they will be want, wanting to take a, uh, take a yeah, selfie or a picture with the tiger looking at them. But the tiger is doing what you are looking at me and I am just walking. I am walking like this, I am putting my head and I am walking like this. You are looking at me, I am not even bothering to look at you. Okay? Or posing for your pictures. Right. So, so he is ignoring visitors. That is his present life. And then, see the last one is what he hears, his desires. He says he hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars. So the last thing, whole day what does he hear? He hears the noise of these visitors coming, going, shouting, yelling, and, uh, doing this, doing that. Throughout the day there is noise. Is it so in the jungle? No. Jungle is quiet. So it's much quieter than this din and hubbub and commotion of these people throughout the day. And even at night, it is not left undisturbed. There are patrolling cars going round and round. Sometimes, you know, the zoos are in the middle of the city. Okay, you will have, you know, roads just outside. So there will be cars moving there also throughout the night. Yeah, you have Aribag, you have in the Borivali, uh, somewhere in the, when we have in Kolkata Zoo, Dalipur Zoo is supposed to be the biggest zoo uh, in India and that is just, just outside there is a very busy road. So, uh, it's not, but for wildlife sanctuaries, national parks, they are obey. They are the outskirts of the cities. They are not Sanjay within. Huh. Sanjay Gandhi National Park. So, it is outside. That's still quieter. That's still calmer. But zoos sometimes are in the middle of a, I have seen one of the bicolor zoos that just outside there is huge traffic. So, constantly they are amidst noise, which they don't like. Because if you have been to wildlife sanctuaries or national parks, there is a strict rule that uh, once I went to this gear only when I had gone to, uh, we had a stake put very near to the uh, to the forest area. And when I had gone to gear, so I, had, I was in a resort which was very near to a forest area. And they have corridors, no? The wildlife sanctuaries, they have corridors. So the tigers and lions and all that they can move around. In that, not within the resort, but just the the border of the resort would be border of the. So it was like after six pm, after seven pm, you cannot keep your lights off. You have to switch your lights off. Whatever you do, it has to be inside the room. You cannot go outside. There should be no noise. After seven, it is quiet because you are near the forest. You cannot make any noise nor switch on any. Then you will be told to leave the resort. You will be asked to leave the resort because as a rule of the forest, the forest guards are there, the forest officers are there. The ones who set up the resort, they have to uh, follow the rules set by the forest in the officers. Uh, in the jungle. You are not in the jungle. You are in an enclosed resort with high walls, barricaded uh, walls and um, 
these what do you see? Right. The bars are there. But then that is it. If you don't, if you flout the rules, if you break the rules, if the resort doesn't, uh, you know, bind the rules, then they will close the resort. So if you if you have to be within, why do they have it? You want to be amidst nature. You really want to see the feel the thrill and all all that. All during the day, at time by six o'clock, seven o'clock, everything is. And they tell you, don't come. Don't come out of your house. Or don't come out from your. Your the room service will be there. The people will go to your room and you know, whatever you have to eat and drink, you have to drink, eat and drink and finish before six o'clock or seven. Can tell them how you can tell them to bring, they will, they are adapted to it. So they will not switch on the light or anything, they will quietly bring it, give it to our room and go. So in room service, room service, in the room you will have to close all the curtains. And light, even if the curtains are Very light, a faint light will go out, but that's still fine. If you cannot have glaring light, and the curtains are mostly very dark. So it uh, gives out this light. So all those things, so why is it done? I'm trying to tell you that is because. The wild animals need to be left in peace and quiet, which is not so for the for the animals who are in the zoo. In the morning also, throughout the day, they're exposed to constant noise, and so is it at night for them. They are never at peace, which is unlike when they are in their natural habitat. So he hears a last voice at night, the patrolling cars, and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant Stars. My brilliant eyes. Have you tiger is cat family, no? Mm -hmm. Have you seen cat's eyes? Mm -hmm. They shine at night. Okay. So his eyes are sparkling. It's brilliant. They are okay. creatures of the night. They come out and you know they hunt, and so the eyes are bright and sparkling. So it's brilliant. And what is the significance of looking at at the brilliant stars? Stars also shine, just like the eyes shine, the stars are also shining. But why do they look up to the stars? They long for freedom. They long to be in a place under the stars roaming by themselves. They want that infinite space to walk around, just like the stars in the sky. They are infinite and they have the entire sky as their own. The animals in the zoo who are in captivity, they long for their freedom. They long to be under the sky, under the stars, and enjoy their natural environment. Okay? Do you understand? Quietly read all the uh, stanzas in your mind and see if there's anything you want to know. Then we will go to the literary devices. Gaurav, read. Reading, no? Achha, why are you putting your head down?
One of you read the poem, who will read Ramad, read the poem. He stops in his vivid stripes. When you read, you should always read the name of the poem and the poem and then in... start. The poet? See a tiger in the zoo by Leslie Ramis. It's how we say. Tiger in the zoo by Leslie Ramis. Yes. He stops in his vivid stripes. The few steps of his cage on packs of velvet white in his white cage. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grasses near the water hole where plum tree pass, a deer pass. He should be snarling, 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 snarling around houses at the jungle's edge. Wearing his uh, white fan, his claws terrorizing the village. Okay. But his long in a concrete ball, a cell, his strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. He hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars, and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stuff. At the brilliant stars. Understood, no, all of you? Let's now find out the literary devices used in the poem. First, we have repetition. Repetition means words which are repeated. So, find out from the poem the words which are repeated in that stanza. A word, yes. Same word being repeated in that one stanza. Brilliant. Brilliant. This is not a word, so Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. He's gone to the last one. Okay. Brilliant. There is something more. Eyes. In the same, it has been used twice, no? Same stanza, it has to be repeated. It has to be repeated. One word which is repeated twice in the same stanza. Star. Read from the beginning, read from the first stanza you will find out. Read it in order, don't hop, skip and jump. Did not find? Did not find in the first answer. Read one of you, read the first answer. Emma, read the first answer. He stomps in his woods, taking a few steps of his cage on bands of velvet white. Can you read? I'm I not rhyming words. No rhyming. The stop, let her read, yes, read again. In his poetry. Read, tell again, read again. Is tell he again, stops. read the full. He, he stops in his woods, just his stripes. Stripes. A few steps of the stage of the dance of the in his quadrant. Please. Couldn't get quiet, repeated twice. Third line is on pads of velvet quiet. Fourth line is in his quiet range. You cannot see quiet. Thrice you read. Children, read. Drop it. Read attentively. So this is repetition. Repetition means when words are repeated in the same stanza. The same words are repeated. So we had quiet in the first stanza and brilliant in the last stanza because it says he stays with his brilliant stares, with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. Now we have literary devices. Literary devices or poetic devices? Okay, since it's a poem, it can be otherwise literary devices are mostly used in poems. Alteration, alteration means words beginning with the same sound or the same consonant. Okay. 
No, same consonant. It has to begin with the same consonant and same sound. Should shadow. Hmm? Should shadow. There is a should shadow. It has to be the same line. Ah, so he should be a in shadow. Okay, short shadow. Fine. Uh, start from the very beginning in the first sentence that you have. Why are you soft? Then why did you hop, skip, and jump? I'm telling you, start from the beginning. What are the alliteration in the first stanza? Stocks and slumpers. Grass pass. Grass and G and P are same. Same consonants. Okay. Uh, he should be lurking and shadow. Should and shadow. Okay. Should shadow. What else? Um, concrete cell. Concrete cell, yes. Concrete cell? Yes. Concrete cell. Yes. Concrete cell. Yes. See, see, no. Concrete cell. Concrete and cell. Sir. 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 No, concrete cell we won't have. Okay. Then? Stair stars. No, it's not in the same line. I'm in the same line. He stares with his brilliant. You are not reading properly, God of Read. How is it in the same line? And he stares with his brilliant eyes. Is it in the same line? That's it? Okay, then we have rhyming scheme. Let's find out the rhyming scheme. What is the rhyming scheme of the first stanza? Stripe, skate, white, rage. Okay, so what is it? AB. Not AB. 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 Skate and rage. A, B, C, and B. A, B, C, B. Why? Because cage and rage rhyme. Next one. Strike a A, B, C, B. Second one, shadow, grass, or grass and pass. Okay. So again, this is first stanza. Second stanza is also A, B, C, B. What about third stanza? A, B, C, B. Is there any rhyming scheme for the house, edge, clause, village? No. ABCD. ABCD. Uh, see the third one. ABCD. Yes. No. It is ABCD. ABCD. Fourth stanza. ABCD. Fourth stanza is again uh, cell, bars, cage, visitors. Okay, this is also A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. And the fifth stanza is A, B, C, D. This was A, B, C, D. Night, cars, high stars. Cars and stars? A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Same, A, B, C, D. Okay. So, A, B, C, D. So, the first First, second, second was also ABCD. ABCD, no, I did the right ABCD. ABCD. So, first, second, and the fifth. That's ABCD. And third, fourth is ABCD. Then, all right. These are the literary devices that we have. Fine. So you have understood. Now we take out your volume. You are going to do the objective types. This is volume two. Page number two hundred and fifty-three. Okay. 
first MCQ is he stops in his vivid stripes. The few steps of the skate and pads are by his wife in this quiet bridge. <coughs> you should be laughing about it. He stops in his vivid stripes. What are these vivid stripes? Stripes on Yes. One each we will do. First one, Roman said, then Sema and the third Gaurav. What is it? Gaurav, where is your Gaurav? Why don't you bring your books and notebooks and home flowers? What are the feeling? I mean, I, like last time it was because of my, I forgot, but now my parents are not home, so I can't do that. You said it's not here. Huh? It's not in his house, it's over here, but he lives in one house, so then it's more like a little bit. Okay, so you have not got your books over here. Okay. Then you can ask, so these two will only see. He stops in his web style. What is okay? Uh, next one, Hema. The oh. phrase pads of velvet white means cause. Oh. Correct. Third one, Roman. Why was a tiger lurking in shadow? Oh. To kill his prey. Fourth one, which animal does not relate to plum? No. Does not relate to means they are not slump. Horse. Stop doing it, otherwise I'll take it another way. For sure. Okay. So horse. Fine. The rest are all plump. The elephant is also plump. You put whatever is so all the more plump and practice horse. Then uh, pick the correct rhyme scheme e of the stanza. That's the a first stanza. B, B, A, B, C, B. A, B, C, B. A, B, C, B. Okay. A B C D A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Okay. This is a B one. Second uh, stanza it says he should be lurking in shadows, sliding through long grass. Sliding through long grass near the water hole where Columbia pass. According to the extract, the poet wishes for the tiger to be sliding through the forest as this would. Okay, or aid in camouflaging the presence of the predator before it rushes in. Help the predator pounce on the prey comfortably without getting tired. Support the predator's vision as it eyes its prey. So, what would be? Assist in keeping unsuspecting of the prey. No. Sliding through the foliage. Okay, we can see the age in camouflage would be, you know, is lurking in the shadows. <coughs> Second, which fact does not connect with the significance of the water hole for the tiger? Roman, many tigers chase prey into the water and hold the victim's head under water until it drowns. Okay, prey feed in the water on water lilies and often wander in the middle of the water hole where they are vulnerable and easy for the tiger to kill. Prey that has quenched its thirst ensures consumption of hydrated meat for the tiger, chasing the panic prey from shallow to deep water where the tiger grabs it. Okay. Third one. Pick the option that does not use lurking correctly to fill in the blank. Okay. Does not use. Okay. The thug was. Lurking in the alley late evening for unsuspecting passes by. The Hana was lurking in its den after a good meal. The detective cautioned her team about the lurking dangers likely to impact the case. The prejudices lurking beneath the surface create misunderstandings. No, which is not the correct use of lurking. B. Why? This has already had a good meal. No. Why will it again hide? So, the hyena was lurking in its den after a good meal is wrong. The rest are all correct. Shadow here refers to the shadow of the tiger, the long grass, the water hole or the deer. No. Long grass. Hiding in the shadow of the long grass. Shadows of whom? Shadows of whom? You will be hiding behind the shadow, no? 
Suppose something is wrong, your father is standing in front of you. You are stand, standing behind him. What are you standing under the shadow of your father? So you will not be seen. So shadow over here is what? Shadow of the grass. Okay. Pick the phrase that does not suggest that the forest in the extract is lush. Lush means there are a lot of foliage. It is not that it doesn't have that much foliage. Long grass, water bowl, plum deer lurking in the shadow. Which tells you that it is not dense. The forest is not dense. No. Long grass. Grass, no. Grass, how can grass be a dense forest? Grass is not dense. Dense forest would be when there are lots of trees. But here it's saying grasses. So that's why it says that it is not a very lush village uh, forest. Third one, he stops in his vivid stripes. Again, if you still engage on passable effect, it's quite great. Where is the tiger at present? In a cage. Mention any one quality of the animal under reference. Is it quiet, desperate, vivid stripes of his body and roaring? Quality, okay? Not physical aspect. Quiet. The animal is quiet. Even though it is full of rage, it is quiet. Which word in the stanza may also mean graphic or picturesque? Vivid. Vivid. Yes. Clear. Next. Why is the tiger in quiet rage? Movement restricted, freedom verbal, not trip properly, both A and B. Both A and B. Both A and B, no? Why is he? He has got to eat. He is not holding in hunger. Okay, his movement is restricted, its freedom is taken away, cartel. that is why it is in rage. So not because it's not getting food. He should be lurking in shadows, sliding through long grass near the water hole where plum, deer, pass. Who is he here? The tiger. Yes, the tiger. Suddenly the focus from tiger in the case shifts to Tiger killing a deer, a deer's a tiger's natural place of habitat, tiger situation in a circus, none of them. Yes, we. Okay. Third one. Which word in the stanza will mean to lie or wait in concealment? Concealment in as name. Shadow, water hole, sliding, lurking. What does the tiger do in the forest? Uh, hiding behind some trees, sitting near a water hole, roaming around the whole jungle, both A and B. Both A and B. Yes. Next, fifth one. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. What described tiger in a jungle? Locked in a concrete cell, his strength behind bars, ignoring visitors, bearing his white fangs. Bearing his Bearing his white hands. That's a tiger in a jungle. Name the poetic device used in the line bearing his white fangs, his claws. Metaphor, assonance, oxymoron, or consonance. Bearing his white fangs, his claws. No. White fangs, his claws. Assonance. Oxymoron would be opposite, or it's not opposite. Consonance is having the same sort of consonance. Metaphor wearing his white pants. Wearing his white pants. Oh, it would be wearing his white pants as a metaphor. It shows his anger or his rage. Okay? It would be a metaphor, not assonance. 
Uh, the poem uh, the poem draws a contrast between dash and dash. Tiger in Animals, human beings, tiger in a zoo, tiger in a forest, tiger in a zoo and humans, humans and tiger in a forest. Tiger in a zoo and tiger in a forest. B1. What has been personified in the poem, Emma? Tiger, forest, zoo, and all of the above? Tiger. Tiger. E. Tiger. All of the above, no? Tiger. E. Personified zoo. is. Oh. No, zoo is not personified oh. over here, no? Of course. Neither is the forest personified. It's only the tiger, which is. If we say no E, E. So the tiger is personified. He is lurking, he is doing, he is locked up in concrete cell. So, personification is of the time. Six. But he is locked in a concrete cell, his strength behind bars, stopping the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. Okay. Six and seven, you do it yourself, then I'll say description of his inauguration as South Africa's first black person and his thoughts on freedom. But how did you... On the second one. Divide your class into three groups and make each group of the following topics research. Black Americans and their fight against discrimination. But Women and their fight for equality. The Vietnamese and their fight for independence. That will, that, it will not come as a uh, group discussion. It cannot be a debate. It can be an extent. So, ah. mommy is giving a speech. You have to find out and give a speech. This is not a debatable topic. These are research to be done on this particular he can topic. Have and you can have a woman's freedom. Yes. You cannot have debate again after three months. Hmm? If we are free to ask we have free time then, but you have to do research. So it's not only you have to be prepared from home and come. We'll do that. And then it has got to be an extra for us a three minute speech. A three minute speech uh, is around no, two pages. Yes. So going to be a two page write up. So you can understand here and say, okay, done in 30 seconds over my speech. And that's not a speech. Then you are wasting time. If you have to do it, you have to do it really well. Do a proper research, get the points. Oh, and from official sites, and you have to yes, get official the, sites uh, and correct uh, facts and figures. And you need that uh, links and all. Mm, yes. You cannot just stand and make up and say uh, what you feel, not your personal opinion, but what has actually happened. Talking about Vietnamese war, you have to know what has happened. What caused the Vietnamese war? What was the destruction? What was the after effect? So they've got to be factual.
I don't look back. No, I read. Okay, shall we discuss? Six man, uh, nine, but he's locked in a coffee cell, his strength man bus. By ignoring visitors, what is the poet trying to say? Tiger knows his power is restricted. There is no use of showing rage. He is less terrorizing because of the cage. All of the above. Ignoring visitors. All of the Ah, yes. Tiger knows the power is restricted. Yes, there is no use of showing rage. Okay. He is less terrorizing because of the cage or of the other. We'll do faster. <laughs> Which option correctly lists the reasons for the tiger stalking the length of his cage? A. A. Achha, let me read. A. You have said A. C. C. A. C. A. C. Let's see. Tiger animals tend to cover large distances and burn a lot of their energy by hunting for prey in their natural habitat. Zoos deprive them of such stimulation and they are restless and bored. Animals are scared of visitors gazing at them in their unnatural surroundings. Zoos are crazy animals are far removed from the privacy of the natural habitat. Animals dislike human noise in cities and react to them aggressively. Zoos are often located in cities or outskirts. Animals require human love and care and risk this when in captivity. Zoos are places. D is definitely not the one. C is also not. Animals dislike human noises, they have to know this also. A or B. A. Can I just read tiger stalking the length of his cages? A. It's not scared of his It's yes, not scared of his cages. Gazing? It's A. They tend to cover large distances. And in their natural habitat. So, in this kind of stimulation, they are restless and they are So, they just keep moving in rage up and down. Third, the main contrasting idea suggested by the extract is that of strength, weakness, nature, culture, beast, mortals, confinement, and freedom. D. Confinement and freedom. Fourth one. Choose the correct option listing the most likely reason for the tiger to ignore visitors. He is scared of the constant stairs. The visitors don't provide him with any food. He knows that none would be would help him out of captivity. The visitors don't speak to him kindly. To ignore visitors is according to the extract. Some is ignoring visitors. He knows that none would help him out of captivity. Yes, he's just good. Seven years, the last voice at night. Uh, the patrolling cars and says the ties at the brilliant stars. At what does the tiger look at night? C stars. Where does the voice come from? B, B the patrolling cars. So the word stares means neglects, glares, ignores, avoids. B, yes. How do the eyes of the tiger look? B. Sad, brilliant, dark, and light. So, what I now want you to do is go to the self assessment questions on page 261. Okay, I want you to do short answer time question. How does the tiger stop in the cage? First one. How would the tiger react if he is left in his natural habitat? First, second, why does the tiger show his white fangs and claws to the villagers? Third one. And the fifth one. The freedom of the tiger is restrained by man. How? Reading. Note the fourth one is pretty interesting. It says write a diary entry of the title. I woke up <laughs> and then I was going. 
I feel so bad, annoyed at the state. I am caged up, and I am not let up. They want to hear me and that extra. And then let's do the last entry. So first, second, third, fifth, and the fourth of the long answer time. Done. So you do the short answers now. Just fifteen minutes time you have still. And the long answer. Or you want to do the diary entry now? You can just sit and do the diary entry now. I did not bring my. We did. We always use the present tense form of the. Just fifteen minutes. I don't want to start anything new. So we have finished this up. So that the chapter will be. Why didn't you bring your language notebook by the phone? The language of literature notebook. I was supposed to take it for the lecture. I thought I brought it. You have to submit. That's why you are not bringing your notebooks. I don't know whether you are writing what you are writing. I just brought, but what notebook is that? Right. Yama, where is your notebook? I thought Did you bring a notebook. You have not. Which notebook is that, Gaurav? The language and literature. Both. Both are there. So I'll take it up for correction. Write down the answer now. Yes. I was having uh, like in my previous book it was that that first slide. Yeah. Then after that two slides. First slide. Story about two slides. Ah, that all. Previous ones are in that book. Seen approaching, the air was fresh and sweet. 
and big drops of rain began to fall. Big drops of rain. This is big drops are tens uh, are tens and pieces, and the little ones are fives. He compared it. He compared it with the of the rain drops. So what was it, ma'am? It started with rain. That you have to see. How did that? Uh, there was hope in Lencho's heart on seeing the rain. When did it change? When it started raining. Uh, you will decide who is going to say. Ah, when the uh, when. First, second, say if you can't, then you. Ah. Uh, when the uh, when we could see that the concrete crystals, uh, the even silver coins that he called were were uh, striking on his uh, field, and uh, when when he saw his harvest, uh, it was. A uh, plain white and looked like salt. No. <laughs> uh, when it started hailstorming, I was going to say hailstorming. To say when a strong wind strong began wind. to blow, and right. along with it, along with the rain came very large hailstorms. Okay, that's when. Man, in this book it's written salt, but in Malayalam it's written snow. Ah, so same only. Same uh, salt. Salt was white, no salt and blue salt. Same salt. Hmm. What happened after it had after the hailstorm had passed? What was the sight? The his field was completely white, like salt. Covered, like covered with covered salt. Covered with salt, uh -huh. and uh, I guess his wife wife was crying. No, first you tell me what that. You know, ask her reaction. Uh -huh. What happened? What was the sight when the rain stop stopped? Uh, like uh, the the field was covered with snow and uh, snow snow or salt and the field was white as it covered with salt. Salt or snow and uh, when she said that. Uh, I'm not even saying what else was there. Not a leaf remained on the trees and the corn was totally destroyed. The flowers were gone from the plants. Right, Lencho said. Lencho said uh, that he uh, moved. Right, like locust one. Uh, so it's not about what Lencho said. The question what is, what was the sight after the hail storm? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, if we just you said only covered with ice, we can have. What were Lencho's feelings when the hail stopped? What was Lencho's feelings? Now, in grey only, I have. Just like answer it. What were Lencho's feelings when the hail stopped? I'm like saying, like it's in that. One. No, what do you mean? One place number. Us me hai, as a as a upper likha hai. Ah, har jagah book me hai. Amala ko book me hai, book me. Ha. What were Lencho's features? These are the lines just after where we said. He was uh, uh, He said that. I mean, he said that he was sad. Like then your soul was filled with sadness. sadness. What was his feelings? His soul was filled with sadness because he felt as if a plague of locusts could have left more than the hailstorm had left on the field. So all the corns were lost, and he had he lost hope. There was only. One single hope. What was that hope? God. Hope from help from God. Don't just say God. What was that one hope? Was help Can from God. Yes. What he wrote in the letter? Huh? What, what did he write in the letter? He wrote a letter to God. He wrote a letter to God. No. So what did he write in the letter? Mention. Yeah. Like he. Like he wanted hundred pesos. No, the shopping. Uh, he he wrote that he wrote the receiver's address, God, and he wrote that uh, like his field was his field like 
a hailstorm just hailstorm strike that is field and um, uh, he could not harvest his crops so he is because of the hailstorm what what happened during the hailstorm uh, his uh, his uh, field was covered with uh, uh, white snow but okay now happened? come to the point both of them are not written just uh, just have to write he wrote to god that if god did not help him and his family they would go hungry that year and so he needed a hundred pesos to sow his field again and to live until the crop comes his crops destroyed after the hail storm is strong you know when it storms it storms okay um but they were asked question from the volume right that's not something i was saying to you Who or what did Lenjo have for this? And who read the who read the letter? The letter. Who read the letter? What is there? Postman. No. No. Like postman. Who did it? Postman. Postman. One of the employees was a postman. A postman. And he helped at the post office. No, he read. He only read. No, he only read. He 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 read. this This guy has a uh, this guy so so had on had, had on God had in God had in God so he felt pity and I'm do I have to say the other side yes 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 he so felt pity and yeah. he collected uh, he collected seventy uh, pesos pesos currency pesos है ना seventy pesos from his colleagues and employees uh, for for charity for charity and And then he asked charity. Asked. Asked. Asked charity. And then he delivered to uh, delivered it to his uh, house. No, he put the money in an envelope addressed to him to Lancho, and with a letter containing only a single word as sign as signature. Oh, house. House. The thing. They will have. Oh, that is a house. Ah, house. Lady, yeah, no. I have a son. Is it 